The Note 9 is dead, or at least that's what Samsung wants you to believe. This phone was abandoned years ago and it's stuck on Android 10. But what if I told you that with a little bit of work, you can bring it back to life better than ever before? Faster animations, modern One UI features, and even Galaxy AI on a 2018 phone. I was so ready to let go of this phone and I'm so glad that I didn't because I completely revived it. I already did something like this previously with the Galaxy S6 where I managed to put Android 12 on it, a 10 year old phone, and it went from being borderline unusable to actually pretty good. So why not give the same bubble bath treatment to the Note 9 because it's such a beloved phone. After all, I only spent like half a day trying to revive the S6. I definitely didn't have any problems with it. It's not... It's not blue, there's, no, there's nothing here. I'm pretty much a professional now. So I watched this video right here, which will show you step by step how to install this ROM, which means that I don't really have to show you because if you want to see me suffer, there's a video for it. I think all you need to know is that you need the Exynos version of the Note 9. And at least for me, I had to wipe the whole storage. So be prepared. But what I will show you is how insane this phone has become. It even has the flash on for some reason. So when this phone was on Android 10, it was noticeably slow and laggy, which I don't have the footage for because in my last video, I said this. No, I'm not gonna switch to the Note 9 because this thing is actually pretty slow. I was so ready to return this phone, but then something happened. I got attached to it. I kept picking up this phone instead of my main phone, especially when I wanted to lay down and plug in my wired headphones and enjoy some content. There's something unexplainable about this phone or maybe there's something wrong with me. In the last video, I also said that it doesn't make sense to buy the Note 9. But with this custom ROM with Android 14, it changes everything. And actually for two re and actually for two reasons. For one, on eBay, at least in the UK, this thing can be bought for about 150 pounds in an A plus condition and probably a lot less in a less pristine condition. And the fact that this phone is completely usable with all the modern One UI 6 features, it's a pretty good buy. Goodbye. And two, this makes this phone a perfect secondary phone, which this thing has become. I'm actually not going to return this anymore. It doesn't have any social media or anything that would distract me. It just has the essential app so people can reach me and I can check some important information without getting lost in Instagram reels. And with Android 14, this thing feels a lot better. And I know it's probably mainly because of the One UI 6, but the animations are smoother and stuff just doesn't take a million years to open anymore. And sure, there's an occasional stutter here and there, but if you compare this to the 8 Elite, which is inside the S25 Ultra, how is this thing even alive? If this phone was 120 hertz, perfect. I also think that the fact that I have this next to a 2024 flagship OnePlus phone it kind of ruins the experience for me. It's not very fair. And look, the Google shelf is here. The new control panel is here. The cool widgets, even Galaxy AI is here. And I'm not a big fan of all this AI stuff, like the AI composer or having this AI in my notes app. Since when do I need AI to just write down my thoughts or just make a shopping list? What happened to just pen and paper? Speaking of pens, the S Pen still works. You can still whip it out while the phone is locked and start drawing and it saves the note when you put it back in the hole. And if the phone is already unlocked, this menu pops up and if you close it down and hover over the pen icon, you get this cool glowing animation and you can click the button on the S Pen to open it. And the button still works if you want to use it as an eraser. One of my favorite features is actually this sketch to AI feature which lets you draw anything and then it turns it into a better drawing. You see this drawing here? It turned it into something like this. And why is it useful? Because it's fun. And now the battery on this thing is pretty good. I must have bought this phone with a fairly new battery because it was actually pretty good even before I updated it. And there's glue all around the edges. Someone definitely busted all over it. But I think the major improvements actually come from Android 14. So in this article, Google's vice president of engineering explained how they've done a ton of work to reduce CPU activity of background apps and that the team has managed to reduce the background activity by 50% measured off the CPU. And what does this mean? apparently much better battery life. You basically download more battery with this update. What's interesting is that when I was on my way to work on the bus, this thing dropped 10% from 30 minutes of just scrolling Chrome, which is not that bad. But then after my six hour shift, this thing dropped another 20% from doing absolutely nothing 
What? The standby on this thing is very questionable. I must be tripping because one day this thing is sipping power and the next day it's chugging while doing nothing. So, any downsides from downloading this ROM? Well, there's actually quite a few, but not all of them will affect you. Firstly, the Bluetooth functionality from the S Pen is gone. You can't pause your music or take remote selfies anymore. So it's an S25 Ultra now? Google Pay doesn't work and there's this thing with the Bixby button. When I was installing the ROM, it asked me if I want to reprogram the Bixby button to something else, and I selected the camera. It basically turned it into the action button from the iPhone 16, so when you press the button, it springs up the camera surprisingly pretty quickly. However, the button doesn't work if the phone is locked, so if you're in a rush to take a photo, you have to start fingering your phone to unlock it, and only then you can press the button. And when you press it again, you can actually take the photo. But in the settings, there's also options for double press press and press to hold and they don't work and I'm sure there's probably a way to reprogram it but from the settings it doesn't work. The iris scanner also doesn't work probably because there's no software for it. When I was setting up the phone I actually got an email congratulating me for getting the S22 Ultra which I assume is how this phone gets the One UI 6. It tricks the system pretending to be another phone. Switching to the 2x lens is also kind of buggy. You get this weird double jump effect and occasionally the screen flashes green. In terms of app compatibility, every app that I wanted to get works apart from one, the Blackmagic camera app. I don't know if it's because the phone is too old or it's because it's running a custom ROM or it needs Android 15. It doesn't tell you, it just doesn't work. But I think that's it for the downsides. So should you install this? Absolutely. Samsung has abandoned this phone despite the fact that it's capable of everything. Anyone who still has this phone and wants to upgrade because of app compatibility, well, that's no longer an issue. And if your battery sucks, maybe just replace it. And if you're worried about the camera, well, the new phones just give you a bunch of software crap, so you're not missing out that much. I think this phone proved to me the importance of having long software support. When Samsung came out with the S24 Ultra and the seven years of support, my first thought was, who the hell is using a phone for seven years? But now it all makes sense. Phones are not improving as much anymore these days, so if the Note 9 is still usable after almost seven years, Imagine how usable the S25 Ultra will be in 7 years. Heck, it might even be usable for 10 years. Phones last a lot longer than we think, and if we keep using these old phones for that long, this will greatly reduce the e-waste. And it's not just about buying the phone from day one and having to use it for 7 years, but it also unlocks the ability to buy the phone down the line and still enjoy it. Think about it, people who don't have enough money to buy the S25 Ultra can still buy it in 2030 and it's still gonna have like two updates left. How cool is that? But for now, I'll catch you in the next video.